I would like to thank you very much for coming to our presentation, which should last around 30 minutes. And uh, we are going to conduct presentation together with, uh, with my colleague. Uh, my colleague is Jarek Świerat from uh, company Contrast. And my name is Maciej Mahacz from Atman. And we are going to show you something which is uh, infrastructure as a code, or in other words, how we can code the cloud. So if we have uh, resources, if we have a cloud, if we would like to make our life easier, uh, the idea is to show how we can reach, how we can be profitable, and that's why we are here together. We are going to deliver to you presentation to show what is the situation for the time being, and then Jarek will conduct a technical part, a uh, live demo, and you will see exactly what I'm going to talk about right now. So I hope this is really uh, interesting part of uh, the technology which is raising on the market. And uh, my understanding is that in the future, such solutions or such ideas will be more and more important in every daily work. For example, my work, yours work, and, and so on. But before I start, I just would like to ask, did anyone has already, was already in touch with uh, infrastructure as code uh, solution or with infrastructure as code before? Just one person? More of you? Okay, very good. And uh, how many of you have been already or was wor were working with a typical infrastructure platform or the cloud plat platform before as well? Almost everyone. So that's very common. Okay, so let's start. Uh, infrastructure as code. How to code the cloud. Before we start uh, something more, I would like just clearly determine what is the infrastructure. So literally, infrastructure is everything which is required to bring our production system up and running. Doesn't matter where, where we are. All the components are placed in the data center uh, uh, location. We have a servers, storage, networking, virtualization system, operating systems on top of that, and the databases, security, security rules, and applications which can be deployed across our infrastructure. So more likely, infrastructure is not something which we are willing to play day by day. Why? It's too complex. It's something physical. We do like to do our life easier. Am I correct? I think everyone should agree. So why not make our life easier? Let's go into the cloud. Let's use a platform which more likely is the most important thing for the people who do environments in, in flexible way, in modern way, using automation processes, using a process which do not need access to the real infrastructure. So uh, infrastructure can be provisioned or provided to you as a service, which can be placed in the cloud. Additional higher levels of the services, like a platform as a service with application layer, can, de can be deployed on the infrastructure as, as a service layer. And the final solution, software, which probably everyone do work day by day in daily manner, is something which we prefer to use instead of infrastructure, instead of even platform as a service. I even don't worry about the infrastructure in terms of black boxes. That's something which we, we don't like at all. So let's try to think of how we can do it easier. And the common technology which is growing in the market, uh, the idea which has appeared several years ago is infrastructure as a code. So infrastructure as a code is something we can do right now. We'll do in that in a few minutes. We, can, uh, we do know that the software it's a part of the cloud. Software contains the code. So everyone who is the coder, who is the developer, can write the code and uh, can use cloud resources in daily work. It's really possible to code the cloud using the cloud, using the infrastructure in the bottom layer. So uh, moreover, it's very easy, it's even easier to define our infrastructure resources in the cloud layer, then just play with their hardware, which is somewhere placed, which is not really convenient for us to work with day by day. So uh, 
let's make a code, write a code, let's run the code once or multiple times to get our infrastructure, which is a virtual. Let's do more likely automation processes, which finally give us something which we use, we can get almost instantly. So uh, when we may need infrastructure as a code solution? More likely, more likely everywhere, at any time, in every place. When we define something which is placed in development and infrastructure, if we are developers, if we have a development systems, if we have a virtual box or the test environment somewhere placed, in this situation, infrastructure as a code is very useful. If we do testing, automation processes, if we need a simplified production system, which is very similar to that one which will be put in the production, we can use automation, we can use infrastructure as a code services as well. We can define very quickly clusters, we can put the test data over there, we, can, we don't have to worry about that, whether or not that particular platform is stable or unstable, doesn't matter. We can define such platform quickly, instantly destroy afterwards when the testing is finished. Moreover, every production cycle in a development has a pre-production or the phase when we, do we, when we do a quality assurance operations and so on. So we can define exact copy of production data using our code which can be defined, and in the future, the same code can be used to deploy our production system. We don't have to do the same operation once, once again, more and more. We do this just one. We can copy real environment, put into pre-production -pre environment, do the test, make sure this environment is stable, and put entire solution into the production system. Am I correct? I think that's, that's true. Moreover, you may work with such platforms already before. And the target, our idea, is to get production system. Again, without any additional work which is required to deploy resources, to configure infrastructure, to do something which is not easy to change but can be automated through the coding to achieve very high level of SLA. So, uh, what are the profits of such operations? A lot of them. I wouldn't uh, discuss every profit, what we get if we start doing some operations using infrastructure as a code processes. We can optimize our platform. We can get any changes quickly, dynamically, with uh, unlimited resources if we do use a public cloud resources. We can define our infrastructure as a code, which is friendly and useful, readable for developers at any time. Do everything which is automated. We don't have to do operations manually. Configurations can be changed at any time, whenever we want. We can watch what does happen in the real system, doesn't matter whether or not it's production or the test system, and we can de define variables which can be monitored, changed, and put into the right life without any additional dependencies. What does it mean in the real situation? In the real situation, we would like to show you work environment, which is kind of hybrid solution. From one point of view, we will have a AWS resources, the cloud. On another side, we will get an Atman cloud based on the OpenStack platform with API. In the middle of, we'll pull the clouding component, which is provided by contrast. On the other side, we just prepare the code, which will be translated by the coding into the production cloud environment. In this particular case, that will be AWS, Amazon, uh, CloudFormation, and the OpenStack on the other side. Tools which can be used to automate our processes uh, are available in the market as well. As well. Part of the platform system, of the clouding system, is Terraform uh, with an uh, Ansible deployed in the middle of. We can use a SAL stack, Chef, Foreman, or our platforms for daily automation processes as well. But in that particular case, our idea is to show something which is not typical, not common, which makes our life easier, which allows us to deploy the same changes at the same time in two different environments with two different APIs 
with two different res resources. We'll try to use uh, OpenStack API version 3 to be used as a connection, as an API between cloud interface and uh, uh, clouding platform. We will try to use a Amazon API Gateway as well as second uh, API uh, connection. We will use a clouding command line utility launch on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Actually, today we will do it from Mac OS system. And in the middle, as I said, we'll have a clouding system, clouding server with uh, Ansible and uh, Terraform inside. The protocol, the communication between host components will be based on API REST uh, protocol and the uh, language used for our live demo that will be Tom, Liam, and JSON scripts with everything under control of uh, Golang language. If we want, we can do integration. Integrate that particular platform with a Git or Bitbucket repository as well to put uh, changes from our repository development or stable repository in that particular environment. That one, that this operation is possible as well as. So uh, let's combine API of two clouds, OpenStack based and uh, Amazon cloud into the, uh, in one place. Let's try to provision our resources used for our work, virtual CPU, virtual memory, virtual storage resources, and the networking. Let's deploy the operating system at the same time, along with security policies, along with uh, applications, and obviously we can do much more. Whatever we do in automation, in DevOps, we can do such operations as well. But unfortunately, we don't have too much time, so that will be pretty much short demo to show you how the situation looks like. As introduction, on the left side, we have a, a clouding server with uh, information about uh, Amazon API configuration with all token secrets already configured. On the right side, we have a code, which is almost the same for both clouds. As do we know, OpenStack API has a different syntax than Amazon API, but clouding, this is the place when all information used to be combined, and we just prepare one script with one configuration, and all that information which we define in such script will be pulled to the clouding server, and then to Amazon, to Amazon Cloud, and to the OpenStack at the same time using the operations. The result uh, is on the bottom. On the bottom, we have an environment with some virtual instance already configured with uh, networking configuration done in placed in particular availability zones which are active. And this is our target, which uh, actually we are going to achieve today with uh, Yarek Health. And I hope everything will go smoothly and you will see how such kind of uh, not usual uh, platform does work in real life. So. Uh, Thank you very much, and uh, I would like to invite Yarek to yes. do like demo. Oh, thank you very much for the introduction. I have my own mic, okay, so uh, I guess I have the free hands. So basically, now we are going to switch to some well technical slides, or they are not going to be slides. This is going to be live demo, so probably it's going to crash. Well, then don't crash on me. Anyway, uh, I am a programmer, so let's imagine that I am a programmer. That means that I'm working with a code, and I want to show you that. So, this is the place where I store my code. I store my code in Git, probably as most of you do, or maybe some other versioning systems, but well, in this case, we are going to use Git. Uh, so, that one is what is Bitbucket. Uh, it can be whatever you use for your code. So, anyway, as a programmer, the mm, situation is that somebody asks you to deploy the code to the cloud because they tell you that you are working in the DevOps environment, right? So you have to know how to do that. Well, you don't know probably because you are a programmer, so how the hell should you know how to deploy the code to the cloud? So, or you go to some DevOps guys or maybe operations and ask them and then wait for them and then wait for them and then wait 
basically, for a month. And then they screw up, and then the managers blame you that the application is not deployed to the cloud yet. And you're responsible to do that, right? So, well, more or less, this is the situation that we are facing every day. So the clouding platform and the solution that we developed is actually targeted to you, to the programmer, who is going to be challenged with the task to deploy the application to the cloud. So what you have to do, basically, is you have to code the cloud, as well, Magic said before. So in this case, our uh, repository looks like this. It's very complicated, I know. We have our awesome application. I'm going to show you that. Uh, that application is really awesome. But it's not the point. I mean, the point is to, to, to actually use the cloud to, to uh, run this, whatever that might be. That might be really awesome application. It doesn't matter. What matters is how to integrate it into clouding. And how to do that is you have to create this uh, simple directory. And in this directory, you have to basically describe the environment that you want to create. And at, at this point, you don't have to think about the cloud provider, if it's going to be Atman Cloud, if it's going to be Amazon, if it's going to be Azure, Google Cloud, whatever cloud provider that might be. You just have to think about the model for your environment. So let's take a look at that. Uh, well, this is the description for the environment that eventually is going to be deployed to Atman Cloud. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you just define some basic VPC uh, options that you have to uh, put in. So a little bit of networking, but not too much, really. Uh, basically, you have to define the region, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What is uh, the, the, the most important part of this uh, is actually the definition of the, of the virtual machines. Well, of course, if you're running your code in serverless situation, as well, my previous uh, colleague was talking about, then you can skip this part completely. Uh, but uh, maybe you are in a position where you have to run your code on like traditional, old-style virtual machines, like most of us do still. In that case, that's really helpful. So uh, basically, you define uh, servers or layer for the server that you want to create. In this case, we are going to create well three machines that are going to be described as the front-end machines with you know those parameters. Uh, this is just the base image that I'm going to use uh, for Atman, etc. Uh, in this section, you also define the firewall situation for this set of machines. So we just want to make sure that only port 80 is open uh, on, on those machines. And that's going to be implemented later as you know, security groups in uh, Atman or firewall rules in uh, Google Cloud. It's going to be translated by the platform, actually. Uh, oh, then we have another layer of, of machines that are going to be backend machines. Then we define some load balancer. And again, that load balancer will end up as well, let's say ELB in Amazon or the load balancer internally in, uh, that is based on the HA proxy in OpenStack or a load balancer in Google Cloud. Who knows what's going to happen? But basically, it's going to end up as a load balancer that is up and running and working. And also, we want to make sure that we attach our front end instances to this load balancer so you know, the traffic will be round robin, etc. And of course, the same uh, story that uh, we attach a firewall. So again, security group and stuff. Uh, and then we can enable provisioning. Well, in this example, we are going to use Ansible. But well, I'm going to show you that in the next step, just to, not to make it too long. So uh, well, that's the, that's the thing. Uh, if we now compare uh, this, what we just saw, I'm going to use like old school tools, VimDiv. Anyway, uh, so we're going to compare ATM to AWS. Uh, as you can see, there are not so many changes in this description. Well, basically, it looks the same, really. Uh, the only differences are some naming conventions. Of course, AWS is using different image names and different, different uh, types, uh, I mean, names for types in, uh, for, for uh, the machines. So those are the differences that you see in the, in the lighter rows. But basically, all the, the rest looks the same. And it's clouding job to actually translate it to the right API and to, to do the right thing. So now when we have those models uh, in our repository, we just want to make sure that they are committed. And OK, they are, that they are pushed. OK, they are, are they? Yes, they are. So just like the rest of your code. Uh, you can work with the branches in, uh, in Git and stuff, so you know, just easy stuff. 
Uh, the next challenge will be to actually run it, right? So we have the code now, we have it integrated with our application code, now we want to run it. And to run it, we need Clouding Client. Clouding Client is just a basic uh, common line tool that is invoking API calls to the clouding server. So the real magic is happening on the, on the server side, on the clouding platform, and this is just a tiny client. Uh, there's just no logic involved in here. It's just calling the APIs to the clouding server just to make it more convenient for the end user. But you can use directly the API calls to the clouding server, which actually helps with integrating this flow into your continuous integration, for example, or continuous deployment, so you can create the environment on demand once you push the code and, and stuff like that, right? So we are used to that. Uh, so in order to use this, I set up previously some nice split in my uh, situation, but okay, now we have it again. So we are in the same place. I mean, this is still the same directory. This is still the same awesome application that we have been working before. And now we want to create a new environment from scratch. So if we go to the website, well, what we need is, of course, we need the, 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 the account on the, on the clouding server. It's really uh, nothing spectacular in here. Uh, there is something, OK, now it, it's working. So you just, you just configure your access to the cloud here, uh, et cetera, nothing spectacular. Some you know, clouding key to actually authenticate the, 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 the client with the server, not just the technical stuff. Uh, what is important is that right now on the, on the clouding horizon, which is the, the GUI for the cloud open stack in Atman, we have nothing, basically. As you can see, we have no instances, no nothing. And now we are logged out, so I'm going to log in again, and the internet is working, actually. That's fine. So we have no instances, no nothing. Uh, in the overview, you can see it's just empty, empty project. That's it. In the network topology, we only have one external shared network. That's it. Yeah, so that. Uh, also, in, uh, in Amazon, I have just the demo clouding running in Amazon right now. So we are going to use this, but also we are going to use these accounts to create another instances. So that's, that's going to happen soon. Um, and now we just uh, actually use the client. So we do this. We do clouding create. We just uh, uh, create our, uh, our product. Our environment will be, of course, production. Come on. And well, in the first window, we are going to use the template one, which is going to be for ATM, for Atman. So when we hit that, stuff is going to happen. I'm going to explain you in a moment what's going to happen here. I want to create the same here. So create. Oh, wait, well, maybe, maybe, maybe this. Uh, so yeah, basically, what you see here is the output of Terraform. So clouding is using Terraform as a backend. Uh, there is some magic involved beyond Terraform as well, but basically Terraform is the tool that we are going to use. So we can see the plan from Terraform. We can review what's going to happen in a moment. So those are all the resources that are going to be created in OpenStack, in Atman Cloud in a, in a second. So if we say yes, then of course we are going to apply this uh, to the cloud. So now while we are watching the paint drying, it's apply. We are going to do the same for Amazon, let's say. So here, my app to whatever that might be, prod. And now we are going to use AWS, so the, the other one. And of course, the same is going to happen. It's going to show us the plan. Yes. Now you can see, the, of course, different resources. They're based on AWS platform. Those were based on OpenStack platform. But they origin in the same model, basically, right? So in the same code. Uh, we're going to say yes here as well. So, well, now it all depends on the uh, on on the speed of the of, of the internet, of course. Now it all depends on the speed of the cloud. Usually, it takes like a couple of minutes to complete. Hopefully, uh, we are going to see some results in a moment. So now we have basically nothing better to do than just watch this or not even watch this, because we can integrate it with our continuous integration system, as I said before. So actually, all of those steps are going to happen you know, in the background when we are building, when we are testing uh, by Jenkins, by 
uh, GitLab, uh, for example, CI, but whatever, that might be Bamboo and stuff. Uh, so there's like one API call that actually is triggering all this. Uh, there is some nice visualization here just, you know, to help us. Okay, so, well, the, the top one is done. That means that we have created our environment in Atman right now, in OpenStack. As we can see, we have all those machines up and running. They are active. So we created two backend and three frontend servers. We're going to wait for Amazon by one, while we are doing this. We are going to take a look in the horizon if something changed. And as you can see, there are some resources now. So they are just fully working, uh, virtual machines running in here exactly as we requested. So also in a network, the network topology has changed. Now, besides our external, uh, external public network, we have two private networks that we defined for our VPC. And there are even some virtual machines running in this private, uh, pri private uh, network. If we take a look in the load balancers, probably we should have some load balancer here, and we do. So, you know, all this good stuff is here. And it's ready to be used, actually. So now you can just take your code and deploy it to this environment, just like you deploy your code to any other environment, basically. So I don't know what tools you are using. Maybe Bash still, maybe not. Who knows? So just feel free and use the environment. And now it's still applying changes to Amazon. As you can see, Atman is faster than Amazon in that case, because we are running exactly the same amount of resources. We are creating the same amount of resources. So actually, the Atman API was faster here. Not intended. Not intended. I, I done nothing to, to make it happen. But OK, now we have the Amazon uh, finished as well. So as you can see here, well, same situation, but completely different environment, basically. If we go to our console in here, and we refresh this view, Amazon console, I mean, really, guys? Can you fix it or something? Anyway, we are using a CLI, so no worries. Uh, all those machines are created, front-end machines, back-end machines, and also Bastion host, uh, Cloud created a Bastion host to actually allow you to access private machines in AWS without the need of VPN or stuff like that. So you can actually SSH to those machines uh, right now. They are all up and running. And again, we are running out of time, so I'm not going to show you the load balancer and the VPC networking security groups and all this uh, good stuff that is actually created behind the scenes. And it's exactly as we defined it in, a, in the code. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, probably we don't have time to show you, or maybe, come on, we can do that. We can do that. Uh, for ATM. We can change stuff. We are going to remove our front-end machines, because why not? We are going to just leave the back-end machines in here. And we are going to enable our pro Ansible provisioning. And the Ansible provisioning is amazing. It's just so simple. Look. I'm just going to create my own account with my own SSH key, so I can access those machines with, from my laptop. So hopefully, we can do that. And again, we have to make sure that we commit all those changes, like Ansible. And we push them. And then we run clouding update. And we want to update our awesome app. That was the ATM situation. We want the production. OK. And something broke, of course. Of course. So that was the live demo that broke. So, well, thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, no, that, I don't know what happened. Uh, I have to investigate that. But basically, oh, the, the idea behind the scenes is that it should work. So there, there is some bug. I'm going to fix it later. But, uh, well, unfortunately, time is up, as I see here. So I have to finish. So, well, thank you very much. So anyway, we are sure that uh, Murphy Low does work. Oh, of course. So that's, that's a perfect example. Time. Anyway, uh, uh, we would like thank you very much for your attention uh, yes. on our just 30 minutes presentation. And uh, I really would like uh, encourage you to uh, be a little bit more familiar with that particular solution. So whoever wants, 
we would like to invite you to the uh, ground floor to put your business card uh, and uh, take uh, and participate in our lottery. We have two prizes, two environments as you wish uh, with uh, cloud resources and two environments with uh, clouding uh, platform can be provided to yours. Uh, just you need to take uh, participation in the lottery. Thank you very much. Any questions, we are here, and then we'll be on the background as well as. Thank you.